everybody. Today we are building our own stretcher. Uh, so that material's out. I'm going to work on a 32 by 40 inch handmade, hand-built stretcher. So close in here. Uh, these are the materials that I'm needing. Um, we have one by three boards, basically two eight foot lengths here. We have a quarter round. Um, there's different types you can buy at Home Depot or at the, the store. Um, this one's a little bit thicker, which is nice because it's gonna lift up my canvas a little bit higher, which I appreciate. Um, for a 32 by 40 inch piece, we just need a length that's 80 inches plus 64 inches. So I have a little bit excess, but that's what I've got ready. I need glue, um, hammer, uh, pliers. It's just helpful in case I make a mistake, I need to pull a, a nail out. Um, these are little short nails. They can't be too, too long because they might end up going like through the backside. So your nails can't be any longer than this width here. Ideally a little like inch maybe. Um, and you also don't want to have a head on it. These are the ones I just found, but ideally a brad is not going to have that nail head on it. So when you go to the store and you see these things in the hardware section, it'll say wire brad instead of nails on there. Um, and that's what you're going to be looking for. Then you need uh, these corner mending plates. So this is in the area in the hardware section. Um, you'll find these in packs of four, which is really handy. Um, some of them include the screws themselves. These ones do not, so you'll have to buy your own set of screws on the side. And those also come in kind of a, a box like this that you can find. Uh, these are corner clamps. You can buy obviously different types of clamps, but I like these because they don't cost too much. I, I mean, back in the day, I think they were five bucks a piece or probably like seven bucks a piece now, maybe something like that. Um, and they're great to have, purchase them, have on your own, and then that's gonna help you kind of set everything square as you're building. Hardware, going down in this way here. This would be not quite, right? Let's go in this way. Fasteners. <laughs> okay, we have some stuff here. Oh my gosh, those look like nails. What size? So, we're looking for something sort of like that. That's one inch. I think one inch can work. Let's see if there's something a little bit smaller. There's some over here as well. See this? This is all under specialty fasteners here. Um, so we want to find the ones that don't have the heads on them. Um, here's, here they are. Wire brads here. That's a one incher. It's probably a good size. So let's go for that. Number 15. This one's a number 17, so I think either of those would work. Okay, now we have the screws, wood screws, and there are these packs that are a little bit larger. We want these sort of thinner ones up here, three-fourths inch, number six is good. All right, there's that. So if you come back again, then you know where to find them. <laughs> um, wait, oops. Here is the molding that we're looking for in this aisle. So you go down, turn the corner, and you have these rows and rows of stuff, and you want to find the half inch, kind of quarter round, somewhere in these stacks, hopefully. So look carefully until you find it. It has all these little pictures here. Okay, so this is the quarter round that we're looking for. This is pine, it's the less expensive, but it has, it's like, you know, the thing that will lift up. It's rounded on one side, like, and so sometimes you have to, you know, you, you can either purchase them if there's a length that you want, or you may have to cut it. This looks, you know, maybe like an eight inch, but there's like a measuring tape here along the side. So you can see how long it is. Let's go all the way down to the zero. And this one is eight feet, which is good. So decide what size your canvas is gonna be and purchase the size, the amount that you need. You may have to go all the way around. So if you do 32 by 40, it's gonna be 32 plus 32 plus 40 plus 40. 
Okay, so now I'm back with the lumber here and I'm looking for the furring strips, which I think are over here. But we want to find one by threes. These ones are not, this is for fencing. So I'm gonna keep looking until I get the ones I need. So if you're gonna like just do like a cradling of a wood panel, these are actually really great. These are one by twos. And that's for like cradling a wood panel. Um, but I wanna build a stretcher, so I want one by threes, which are a little bit wider than these. So that's what this is, I believe, up here. Yeah, one by threes by eight feet. So what I do, because I'm a nerd, is I pull every one of them out to make sure they're not warped and pick the ones I want and purchase those. So there they are at the end of a sort of lumber aisle here. So if you want to do like a wood, cradle wood panel, they have these different pieces of wood, like there's masonite. Some of these are like chopped to size. Like these ones are small, like two by four. So like something like this is really great because it's not gonna work too much on you. It's thin, it's inexpensive, and then you can cradle it and it'll be nice and flat and solid for you. And then there's also like really big sheets if you can manage to hold that somewhere four by eight feet. We can chop it up and sculpture if needed. And that pretty much takes care of everything other than basics like wood glue, which you know where to get. Okay. So those are the materials. Think and just tape measures, very important. Pen to make sure that you're getting things correct. So the first step basically with this is to take this quarter round and attach it to your one by three pieces of wood. So, I need to kind of measure to make sure that I know where I'm going to put my cuts because I have my saw behind me. Uh, that's a miter saw, which is really handy. Um, so I kind of like try to measure maybe like one inch from the end so I have a little buffer. And we're going to do two 40 inch lengths here. So basically to 41. So I know that I'm going to glue between these two areas. And then the other thing that I measure while I'm, while I'm doing it, if I have this 40 inch length, I kind of like to make my my wood or my nails go evenly spaced across the quarter round that I'm gonna attach here. Um, and so I kind of put little marks so I know where I'm gonna put my nails at. So maybe like start at an inch and a half in on each side and then maybe put, you know, a nail every like six inches or so. So this is 36, so that is pretty handy with my math here. So this is where you're going to get your, your math for your artists, right? I had a class I thought I was going to teach that would be cool called math for artists. <laughs> how to measure, right? Pretty simple, but you can also do lots of things like how to hang up your artwork uh, well on the walls in the class like that. Um, and then I'm going to do a second length, put a little space in between so I have room for the cuts. So two inches there and then another 40 inch length. And again, kind of measure where my nails are gonna go for that one. Inch and a half in. And then, again, every six inches. So 18, four, three, six. Okay, so now, since I have that measured out, then I can just apply the glue in the areas where I want it to be rather than having to glue the whole thing. Uh, so I'm just going to run it along the edge there in the area where I, I glue or I measure it. Mean. So I have one length between there and another length between here. So, you know, my experience as an artist is I don't know, artists tend to be handy people. If you aren't, you become one, kind of. <laughs> you have to, kind of. I don't know. And so, you also get, oh, oops. Okay. Somebody get some paper towels for me, babe. <laughs> yeah. Do you want it to line up directly? Uh, just put it all the way to the end, then we have space to cut. So, then just layer, turn it around on there. And then we're going to shear the nails here. Start at the very end. Hopefully, you see where my not where 
hopefully you see where my one and a half inch mark is in between. Yeah. How far from the sides of the corner do you do it? So, in the middle? I can show you the first one over here. Close in over here. So there's my, I'm holding this on here because it will slide around if you have a lot of glue on there. But I want to make sure that head doesn't stick up, otherwise it'll show up on my canvas. And then I'm just going to go along and have these little marks and just put those nails in and attach it. hammer into a curved surface. It is very strange. Um, so it goes fast for me and then goes slow for me. I take that as a challenge. <laughs> well, don't hurry. Just do it. Just get it in there straight. slide it this way to do, just make sure it snaps in at 45. And then the other thing is that you have this little button up here. It'll turn a light on and it kind of gives you this. And then when you get it down to this point, you see a line that's where it's going to cut for you. Okay. So we want to make sure that we cut inwards because we're going to make a frame, right? If you count the other way, then you're going to have problems. And maybe you'll come down here and hold this for me. I mean, you can totally do this on your own, but since I have her here to help me. So I see that shadow, and then I have my little mark. That's where the start of my structure is going to be. And I can see the shadow, and I can line up that corner. Because that's going to be the outer measurement of the structure. Okay, here comes noise, so watch out. Start to ruin the blade. Okay, so I did that. So now I'm going to move down here. 
I'm gonna double check with my tape measure to make sure that I've gotten 40 inches. So what I do is I twist it up on the side here, like this. And I know that this is the outer length of my canvas. I want it to be 40 inches, so I'm just gonna put a little mark up here because I might have accidentally chopped off more than I thought, which I did. So I'm gonna go with this one. And then, so I need to make sure it goes in this way to make a full frame. So I need to um, hold this in. So there's a little lift lever underneath here. I pull that up and then I slide it all the way over here to the other 45. Then I put this down that locks it in place. And then I check my light again here. Make sure I'm going with the right one, which is why I put that arrow towards it. And remember that the blade itself has a certain width to it. And so you have to accommodate. So I'm putting my mark to the inner part of the blade because I know it will chop off a little bit. And there I have my first 40 inch side of my stretcher. So I wanna do that for the other one and then also for the same process for the 32 inch lengths until I get four of them then I can put them together. So instead of using a tape measure this time, I put them back to back. Put them back to back, right up to that corner, perfectly aligned. And then on the other side, and then I just make a mark here. And then again, put my arrow to it. And then I'm gonna make that cut, and then I know they're perfectly the same. All right. All right, we have four chopped edges. 32, two 32s, two 40 inches. And these things are kind of a pain if they're not in the position where you want, but you have to just twist this around, blah, blah, blah. Um, these corner clamps are handy um, if you want to invest in some of your own. And then there's two sides, and then these two sides, I lay those in. And then we need glue and nails again. I loosely put them in the corner, the corner clamps, okay? And then what I do is put some glue on the interior edge. Wait, this one needs to come out a little more. It's okay. Hold on. And then I put it on both sides here. And then I'm going to clamp these in before I add the mending plates. But you want to make sure that they're as square as possible. So you want this to go up here. And then I hold it with my hand and then tighten it in as much as possible. So at this point, obviously things are still normal. So the nice thing about these is that this thing moves. Try not to be too forceful or impatient because I don't want these things to bend. Students tend to do that for me. <laughs> and I'm like getting mad. <laughs> okay, so then I'm tightening these in. These are straight so that you can move them. You can keep it flat, but then still move it to tighten them in. Ideally, not entirely flat, but. So if you want them good and tight. So before I do any hammering with nails or anything, I'm just gonna glue and get it settled into those clamps so that it's all totally square. Yeah, uh, when I'm at Home Depot, I also spend like forever picking out my own wood, which people think I'm crazy because I go through like the whole pile, make sure they're not warped. No, you truly should. <laughs> <laughs> that corner in place and then one up in the quarter round and like if I try to close a gap like that I try to like find the best way to kind of try to close that and you'll find you'll be able to get it pulled together so yeah closed up and then so I'll do that with all of them So 
So ideally, I will put one on one side and one on the other. Oh, so like one of the lower ones. Yeah, I just didn't do it on that one because I was trying to close up that gap. Or like I have a little edge sticking out, so I'm going to do this one down here and try to hammer it together better. which isn't fun, so just pull it up and try it again. So you've got reinforcement at the very corner. You've got your glue on there. And then these just kind of put it in the center. And then um, use the cordless drill. If it works, it does no! not work. <laughs> so. Goes pretty fast with the cordless drill. The next thing is that you need to measure for a crossbar. So the rule of thumb is generally, I don't know, every 20 to 30 inches you want a crossbar. So we have 40 here, so we're going to put one here just to make sure that it's good and solid and isn't going to bow in. So I need to measure the space in between here. So it looks like roughly 27 and a half inches, okay? So now I'm just going to make a flat cut at 27 and a half inches, maybe slightly under, and then see if I can get that to fit in between here, okay? So we, we chopped the crossbar and trying to see if it actually fits, but rather than making it too short, I think it's better to try and shove it in so it's good and tight. Looks like we have a sticker on here, so let's get that out. And then the other thing that I do is remove it from the clamps at this point so it's going to be flat on the ground. So I'm going to do that. So these are, these are all screwed in with the, with the uh, measuring plates and hammered and glued. So the corners are really good and solid. So I can remove it now. And then I just want to make sure that it's good and flat on the floor to see if I can get this corner crossbar to work for me. Um, what I often do is I measure to just make sure I've got it right in the middle there. I think this will fit actually perfectly, but let's measure the center first. What, 20? So we want it to go right there in the middle. It's going to be a nice solid stretcher for us. So um, what I do then is put a little bit of glue. You have that hammer, grab one hammer maybe. So I put glues on the ends there. Okay. <laughs> and we're done. Woohoo. <laughs> okay. Hey there, everybody. I'm in the studio here. I just wanted to show you a few other examples of completed stretchers that I have also built. Um, I build all of my own um, because I like the solidity of them. They're much more... Um, they're much stronger, better quality, um, something that I can feel confident in perhaps selling someday, giving off to a collector. Um, so you can do any size, any shape 
a stretcher according to the process that I just showed you. Um, so you can see here, same thing, mending plates, crossbar. Crossbar, like I mentioned, what is generally about 30 inches per bar. So this is a larger piece I just wanted to show you the back of because I don't have one that's not already stretched because I'm in progress on some things. Um, but you see here, this has multiple stretcher bars and you have to also have to balance across versus up and down. So don't forget all of that, you know, basically what, 30, 30, I can just measure it for sure. Um, or this is about two feet this way, a little, little more than two feet this way. So roughly that works. Um, so hopefully in the future, you will enjoy building your own stretchers. And this was a good sort of introduction to how it might work. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the demo. I'll be posting more when I can. Mm -hmm.